Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and I wanted to give you 10 iPad tips that you should know. This will hopefully help you use your iPad better and help you address those questions that you had that I get asked so often. And the first one has to do with Safari. So if we go into Safari, you'll see we're at my website. And you may or may not be familiar with it that you can do tabbed browsing, but you hit the little plus here and now you've got tabbed browsing. And then if I go to, let's try iCloud.com, you'll see that we've got two tabs and what we can do is either keep them separate like this or we can split them into separate panels themselves or split view. Hold down this button here and open split view. And now we've got two browsers open in the same window. So now I can go to iCloud.com. We'll go back here and you'll see we've got the same thing. Now, a lot of people ask me, what do you need to do if you need the desktop site? And you can see we're on the mobile version of iCloud.com. Well, what you can do is tap and hold the refresh button right here and request desktop site. This works on any site and will bring you to the full desktop site. So now we've got the mobile one and now we've got the desktop one. So you can use the desktop site if you need to, and you'll be back to browsing like you were on a Mac. So that's three different things that hopefully will help you right there. Now, the nice thing is split view carries through as well. So if we go home and then go back in, it stays. But if we want to get out of it, we just tap and hold again and then merge all tabs. And now we're back. So we have all of these tabs open and we're back to the full screen view. Now, the next thing you can do is close all of your tabs at once. This is pretty simple and straightforward. Again, hold this button and then close this tab or close all three tabs. Now everything's closed and we can start over again. So the next thing has to do with actual the touchpad that's hidden on this. So maybe we're in a document or maybe we're typing a website and we need to, need to edit the address. And instead of tapping here and then trying to tap where we want to edit and it's a little bit of a pain, we can use two fingers and this turns into a trackpad. We can scroll around and use this anywhere we want on the iPad. I use it all the time to kind of specify what I want, especially if you're taking notes, it's really handy. So you could go here, delete this, or if I need to move over here quickly, I can get rid of this. And I think you get the idea, but it's super handy and something I find that I use all the time. Now, the next thing has to do with scrolling. And if we go back into Safari, this will work on anything, but let me show you, we'll go to apple.com. I'll scroll to the bottom. And if you want to get back to the top quickly, just tap up here and then tap somewhere in between the top border and the border of the iPad's bezel here. So again, scroll down and we're back up. If you go here, back up. So really this top bar and it makes it really simple and convenient. And the next tip has to do with settings. So settings is something that you may want to access and it's very difficult to do quickly for the specific app, unless you use Siri. So if I hold this down, settings, we say settings using Siri, it will bring us immediately into the settings for that application. So you'll see these are the Safari settings. Now I can do that on anything. So maybe I want to go to camera, get to the settings quickly, settings. Now we're in the settings for photos. So it's really simple and straightforward and actually something I use all the time. Now, the next thing is we can have the iPad actually read to us. Now this will work on an iPhone as well, but if we go to settings, general accessibility, then speech, we have two options. We can speak the selection that we've made or speak the whole screen. And then we have other options as well, but let's take a look at how this works. So if we go to notes, you'll see here's the sentence I wrote earlier. And if we tap and hold, we can say speak. Hi, how are you today? So it will speak the sentence. Now, if we go to a website, this works as well. And if we pull down with two fingers, it will start reading everything on the screen. So if we just pull down, iPhone X, overview, iOS, tech specs, five, iPhone X. so that's a display accommodation. We can have it read the entire thing or read whatever selection we have. So right here, we can say speak. Been to create an iPhone. So I think you get the idea. That's a pretty handy tool, especially if you want it to read sentences late at night, or maybe you have issues with vision, things like that, that should really help. Now, the next thing is drag and drop. And this is something that I think people will appreciate and may not even know that it's there. So let's go ahead and open photos and notes. So here's photos. I've got some things in here. Uh, let's bring open notes here as well. There we go. Just makes it easier that way to see both. And then we'll drop the keyboard here. Maybe we want this photo. 
over here. We can drag it over here. Now we have the photo there. Maybe we want something else here. As far as photos, uh, we can do that as well. So maybe this one. We can drag and drop. It's super simple and can be done throughout the OS. So if I tap and hold here, then I hit the home button. I can drag this into something else also. So it doesn't have to be a side by side split screen in order to do that with split view. The final tip is one that's a little bit difficult to master, but it's moving multiple apps at once. So if you tap and hold on an icon until it starts to wiggle, move it a little bit and then tap on another one and you can create stacks of things you want to place in one place. So you'll see there's a little four on it right there. So I can move that around, put it in a folder, move it out of a folder or put it right back and they spread back out. So again, tap and hold, then move slightly, then tap on the different icons you want to move. And that will allow you to move a lot of things very quickly. So maybe you want these in an Apple folder. You can put them in an Apple folder or you can just leave them like this. So it's up to you, but that's a really simple and straightforward way to move a lot of icons really quickly. Maybe you need to move all of these out of the way, put all your games into a games folder. That's an easy way to do it. So hopefully those tips helped you out and maybe you haven't heard of some of them before. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.